On the rabble. Life is a well of joy. But where the rabble also drinks, there all wells are poisoned. I appreciate all that is clean. But I do not like to see the grinning snouts and the thirst of the unclean. They cast their eyes down into the well. Now their disgusting smile reflects back up to me from the well. They have poisoned the holy water with their lustfulness, and when they called their filthy dreams joy, they poisoned even words. The flame shrinks when they put their dank hearts on the fire. The spirit itself seethes and smokes wherever the rabble approaches the fire. In their hands fruits become sickly sweet and overripe. Their gaze makes fruit trees prone to windfall and withered at the crown. And some who turned away from life only turned away from the rabble. Not wanting to share well and flame and fruit with the rabble. And some who went into the wilderness and suffered thirst with beasts of prey simply did not want to sit around the cistern with filthy camel drivers. And some who came along like annihilators and like a hailstorm to all orchards merely wanted to plant their foot into the moor of the rabble to stuff its throat. And the bite I gagged on most was not the knowledge that life itself requires hostility and dying and torture crosses. Instead I once asked, and almost choked on my question, What? Does life also require the rabble? A poisoned wells and stinking fires and soiled dreams and maggots required in life's bread? Not my hatred but my nausea fed hungrily on my life. Oh! I often grew weary of the spirit when I found even the rabble had wit. And I turned my back on the rulers when I saw what they call ruling today. Haggling and bartering for power. With the rabble. Among peoples of foreign tongues I lived, with my ears closed, so that the haggling of their tongue and their bartering for power would remain foreign to me. And holding my nose I walked annoyed through all yesterday and today. Truly, all yesterday and today smell foul of the writing rabble. Like a cripple who became deaf and blind and dumb. Thus I lived for a long time, so as not to live with the power, the scribble, the pleasure rabble. Laboriously my spirit climbed steps, and cautiously. Arms of joy were its refreshment. For the blind man life crept by as if on a cane. But what happened to me? How did I redeem myself from nausea? Who rejuvenated my eyes? How did I manage to fly to the height where no more rabble sits at the well? Did my nausea itself create wings for me and water divining powers? Truly. Into the highest regions I had to fly in order to rediscover the wellspring of joy. Oh I found it. My brothers. Here in the highest regions the wellspring of joy gushes for me. And there is a life from which no rabble drinks. Almost too forcefully you flow, well of joy. And often you empty the cup again in wanting to fill it. And I must still learn to approach you more modestly. All too forcefully my heart still streams toward you my heart, upon which my summer burns, the brief, hot, melancholy, super-blissful summer. How my summer heart yearns for your coolness. Gone the hesitating gloom of my spring. Gone the malice of my snowflakes in June. I have become summer and summer noon entirely. A summer in the highest regions with cold springs and blissful silence. Oh come, my friends, and let the silence become even more blissful. For it is our height and our homeland. Too high and steep we live here for all the unclean and their thirst. Cast your pure eyes into the wellspring of my joy, you friends. How could it become murky from that? It shall laugh back at you with its purity. We build our nest in the tree called future. Eagles shall bring us solitary ones food in their beaks. Truly. No food in which the unclean are allowed to share. They would think they were devouring fire and burn their snouts. Truly. We keep no homesteads ready here for the unclean. To their bodies and to their minds our happiness would seem a cave of ice.
and like strong winds we want to live above them, neighbors to eagles, neighbors to snow, neighbors to the sun. Thus live strong winds. And some day I want to blow among them like a wind and steal their breath away with my spirit, thus my future wills it. Indeed, Zarathustra is a strong wind to all lowlands. And this counsel he gives to his enemies and to everything that spits and spews, beware of spitting against the wind. Thus spoke Zarathustra.